Hello, welcome to this week's How's the Market, Pensacola. Well, subprime loans are back, so we must be setting up for a crash. Yeah, okay. That was some of the headlines I saw this past week leading up here to Valentine's week, um, was that subprime loans are back and that a foreclosure crisis is coming. There's nothing pointing to that. And yes, they've changed the name of what they used to call subprime. Some of it is Alt-A. I was doing mortgages in 05 and 06 and 04, so I understand the difference between Alt-A, which A paper would be your regular conventional loan, BA, FHA type loans. Alt-A basically was for different products. And what those products were, uh, self-employed sometimes had trouble with conventional or A paper, so they would do what they call a bank statement loan. So they would, instead of looking at your income, they would look at your last 24 month bank statements and average out your deposits. Okay, so these are what you're making as a business. And then they start talking about your debts and what you worked out and what you're having to pay. So that was what they called Alt-A. Subprime was what did really get us in trouble. That was when you know we did what they called no-doc loans. No-doc was no documentation. And at the point they were doing, at one point in 2006, they were doing 110% of the purchase price so you bought a house for $200,000, they'd give you a $220,000 loan, no documentation. Literally, I pulled your credit report and that was it. But I didn't ask you questions about your income. I didn't ask you questions about your assets. Those were the type of loans that got everybody in trouble. My shop, you had to be very specific in order to do that. I lost quite a few loan officers working for me because I was very specific. I know these products and then why they were there. So I wasn't giving them to everybody. The qualification you had to have for that no-doc loan was like a 760 credit score. So you get a 760 or a 780 credit score, you're good to go, no problem. We can get that loan done. Here's the difference between then and now. Do some of these, what they are now called is non-QM. QM stands for qualified mortgage. Qualified mortgage is the new term, it's the new wrapping term around the same, the wrapper around the same thing that I called a paper. Your VA, your FHA, your, your conventional. Non-QM, non-qualified mortgage, means that you come outside of TRID, which is fine, and you, <clears throat> you can get these bank statements. Most of these are Alt-A loans. I'm working on one right now this week. It's called a DSCR loan. Basically, this is for investors that own a real rental, right? And it, I can do this for commercial, I can do this for residential. You do these, if you take the rental, that income and if the property covers itself plus a profit. So debt service coverage ratio. And there's a whole formula that I'm not going to go into in this show because this show is about real estate, not about mortgages. I do talk about that with my clients when I do these loans for them. Um, just for you know, yeah, some of you guys don't know, I have my mortgage broker's license I have for a while now. Um, I do very, very few loans. Most of the loans that I do um, are just like these type, these a little bit more difficult style loans because I know how to do them. Besides that, if you come to me and work and, and, and I'm your real estate broker on a transaction, even though there are some conventional loans I could do, I refuse to be the person. I think that's two separate jobs. I think the mortgage person in a transaction and the realtor in the transaction is two separate jobs and I refuse to do both of them. VA and FHA will not allow me to do either one of them and that's fine with me. I kind of agree with that. That's why even though I can do conventionals, I just don't. I've got some great mortgage partners here in town that I refer out. And you've got some other folks that, you know, there's some other places that are great. They do those jobs real, real simple. These type loans I do for mainly my investor clients, or if there was a non q if we can get something done, if you're on the cusp of getting something done, a paper, but we have to take you non-QM, then we can talk. I can adjust things. I just don't do it if I'm the realtor. I know some other non-QM people that will help out as well. All the loans that I do, uh, and the one I'm working on right now is a DSCR. Again, you basically take the debt as long as it covers, then the lender's willing to lend. Here's your biggest difference between 2005, 2006, and why we're not going to see another crash. These are not 110% of the loan. That same $200,000 purchase price, if I'm doing a DSCR loan, you're putting 25 to 30% down. And you still better have a 700 credit score but you're gonna have some skin in the game. There's your biggest difference. That's why we had a bunch of people over leverage because we had people at 
doing a DSCR and it barely covered, but when things went down, they were out. And I had people buying, there were people buying properties. I remember in Tampa Bay, there were some clients that bought properties that were losing $80 a month, but their whole projection was real estate's gonna continue to climb. When you're investing, appreciation is a bonus. I know that shocks a lot of people, especially the last couple of years, because we've seen some serious appreciation and it's been a great bonus. But when you are investing, not trading, trading real estate is flipping. All right, and I'll put a link below to one of the speeches I did down in Orlando a few years back talking about those differences. You trade real estate, cool, just like you trade stocks, but then you also invest in real estate. Investing is when you're looking at cash flow. If you're doing it for cash flow only, appreciation's a bonus. I'm looking more at the cash on cash return, cash flow of the property as we buy it, and then I'm also looking at the tax benefits of being a landowner. There's where we're looking at when we're investing. When we get the appreciation, great, it's a bonus. But I had plenty of clients that bought in 2007. Their property depreciated after they bought it. They didn't care. Why? Because we bought it for the right reasons. We bought it for the cash flow. And their cash flow continued to go up because the cash flow, when they had the rent rate that they bought it at in 2007, but if you've noticed anything about rent rates, they've been going up steadily, uh, even through the crash. So there's a difference when you start talking about investments. I know that some people are looking for homes. I know that some people are looking for investments, uh, but I just wanted to bring this up because I'm seeing a lot of headlines about, hey, subprime loans are back because they're talking about non-QM. They're talking about the bank statement loans. I, I have news for you. Those have been back for five, six, seven years. All right, they really never went away. There was probably a small time in 08, 09, 10 where banks got very conservative and pulled back, but then they've brought these type loans back with the proper loan to value. 75% loan to value, 70% loan to value, 65% loan to value. Some people, some of the places are loans that I write money through, they require 35% down. All right, these are investment loans. Good DSCR loans is, is well, I'm not gonna go through that. I'm not gonna go through that on this one. Anyways, uh, reach out to me if you got any questions on that. All right, well, this show is about inventory levels here. So I know I've talked on the mortgage department today, but I always try and get a little bit of knowledge for the marketplace before we start talking about inventory levels here. So let's get to a Scambi in Santa Rosa County right now. Let's go. All right, if you've never seen the show, you don't know that I always start with this slide right here. It says that if we have between six and seven months worth of inventory, we have what's called a neutral market. Anything greater than seven months is considered a buyer's market. Anything less than six months, considered a seller's market. What the slide doesn't say, anything greater than nine months, a hyper buyer's market. Anything less than three months is considered a hyper seller's market. Let's start in Escambia County. And just like last week, we have everything in a hyper seller's market to and include the luxury, 700,000 plus, Right on the cusp, 2.9 months worth of inventory, but that is below three, even with new math. Um, looks like we're at 388. We did add a couple of properties active, but not much, not much. Um, I know, I think last week we had that one that was under 50,000 in Escambia County, and yep, it's under contract already, because this would be the pending. So 963 pending, 388 active. Uh, I had somebody call me the other day, another realtor, because it's funny, I have found that about a quarter of the viewers of this show's local realtors here watching to get this information. So I have no problems with that. I don't want to share this information with everybody. So it's funny, but I had one of the, uh, it was a young realtor who just young in the business just started and said, you know, I looked at your actives and then I went in the MLS and it was like 1100 and you're showing, saying 300 and something. Well, that's because the MLS combines these two. When you put something contingent, it says all active. So search all active. You'll figure that out. That's why it shows a much higher number. Uh, 388 is the active as of the time of this report for Escambia County and 
just like I have said the last couple of weeks for both the sellers and the buyers, pretty much everything's selling at 100%. I had somebody come in um, and offer me 78% of what we were asking. Yes, the property's been on the market for a minute. All right, we had dropped the price a little bit. But then when you come in 78% plus one a bunch of things, it, you're just going to aggravate a seller. Uh, and I think that's a waste of your time. So pay attention to that because here's the, here's the what things are selling for, the list of sell ratios. They're just not there. Santa Rosa County. Jump over there. Hey, we jumped over 200. Last time I want to say it was 198. So we jumped over 200 properties. There is nothing under 50,000. We got the one pending. And everything is a hyper sellers. It looks like the biggest inventory levels or the most months is that 550,000 to 600,000. So, and that's 2.3. Besides that, these numbers up here make me nervous as we're in the middle of February because usually these are higher. Uh, the 0.2 months for 150,000 to 200,000. The 0.4 months for 200,000 to 250,000. I mean, the 0 0.3 months for 250,000 to 300,000, these are just 0 0.2 months for 300,000 to 350,000. So if you look at, what is that? Let me see if I can do some quick math. Everything up to 350,000. Okay, 11 plus 16 is 27, plus 13 is 40, five, seven, eight. There's 48 properties total. And I promise you some of these down here in these price points need some work. Um, I didn't look them up, but they need some work. That's just these price points right now. So, yeah, that makes me nervous. That 350000 to 400000 has 36 active, and I promise you most of those are builders. And we've if you've watched the show, you know I talk about that. Builders will put one on the MLS for that floor plan. They may sell six or seven of the same floor plan, but that one on the floor plan, and that's what we're seeing because they keep that one active. Even though they sold three of them, they keep that one active just to talk about the floor plan and that neighborhood. So... Pay attention to those. Those are the numbers this week. Uh, I always end the show talking about our instant offer program. I got six appointments this week off the instant offer program. People that saying, hey, I need just a quick instant offer. Had one last week call me going, hey, didn't realize we're about to lose the property on taxes. So they we, we offered them an instant offer, saved the property on taxes. They were able to put some money in their pocket. Also had one said that we need to be in Colorado uh, in a couple of weeks. So we're under contract. We're making sure title work works there. And then I've had two others take me up on the, hey, this is the instant offer. We use this instant offer like an investor. If you don't know about the program, I come out and give you an instant offer that we close in two weeks. Close as fast as you know we can get title work back. Make sure that everything's good. There's no other liens that we don't know about. That is the floor. A lot of people have been using that as the floor. Okay, this is what we know we can get, but we don't have to sell quickly. So let's come on the market and see if we can get higher. And so I market it for them. If they can get higher, you just kind of get mad at me because I made you more money. And to be honest, whatever works out for you best, it doesn't bother me either way. Yeah. I had one person look at me and go, well, yeah, but you don't want to market it properly if you're marketing up here because you want to buy it here. No, I do. I'm one of those strange ones that is actually, if I make you more money, I always joke, if I make you more money, you can get mad at me. But I also know that if I do that, then you're going to be a referral for life. Uh, I had one that somebody took me up on an instant offer last year. And they saw me and my wife at a restaurant and came up and we were talking for a second. And he said, dude, I've referred like six people to you because we used the floor and I got him more. And I told him, I mean, that's going to be my slogan. We used the floor and I got him more. Um, <laughs> and I told him, I'm like, man, I'm upset you got more. He said, what do you mean? I said, no, I'm kidding. You know, I, you know, I'm kidding, but I wanted that one as a rental. That was a great little rental area, but you know what? This is what we could offer. And the marketplace dictated it higher and he made more money and he was so happy and that's fine with me. Uh, I'll find another one. I'm not worried about it. I had one right now that I was going to buy under contract, but a client of mine called me up and said, I'm re I really need to get a new rental fairly quickly. And I just assigned it over to him. It's like, hey, listen, that's fine. I'll find another one. I'll find another one. My clients come first. My investor clients know this too. If they go to bid on a property, they know I will not bid against them. They, a lot of them learned that even in the foreclosure crisis because there's times I was bidding and I would have a client call me going, hey, I want to put in an offer on that one. And I'd be like, Ur! they went, oh, let me guess, you were fixing to. I'm like, yep, I was, but I promised you the whole time that I'll never bid against you. Uh, so I don't, I just don't do it because I know I can find some more, whereas my clients come to me for as a professional to help them develop what they're wanting to develop. So anyways, the instant offer program's got all the information below. Check that out. Here's some numbers. We still need inventory. Uh, I know this upcoming week, 
We've got Pensacon in town. So if you're out and about and you see people dressed up, that's why. And then the following weekend, of course, we got Mardi Gras, which will be, yeah, there'll be other people dressed up. There'll be people dressed up for the next couple weeks. <laughs> Pay attention to that. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. I'm a man on a mission. My mission is to help people break through all the noise out there. And Don't need no permission. I want to help you get to actual truth. Don't you just want the truth?